The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com. Get this entire show commercial free, the bonus show, video of the bonus show, and an archive of shows that dates back to August of 2005. As incredible as it sounds, uh, we were only 12 at the time, and it's really, it's a, it's a weird show, but those are available as a David Pakman Show member. davidpakman.com slash membership, and through the end of the month, just a few more days, davidpakman.com slash hoodie. One-year membership, David Pakman Show hoodie like the one Lewis is wearing. It'll probably fit you a little better. You'll probably buy the right size, which Lewis has not, uh, has not exactly done. But your choice of size and color, davidpackman.com slash hoodie. Uh, scientists are claiming a major breakthrough in seaweed biofuel. We hear about these every couple of months, Lewis, a potential new source of, of fuel that could replace fossil fuels. Typically, what happens with them? They go nowhere. Right. Um, or there becomes some kind of opportunity cost that makes it untenable. My research into this shows that there is significant potential here, and this could prove to be an alternative to coal, it could prove an, be, to be an alternative to oil, and it's a, a result of a newly engineered microbe which can actually do the work of metabolizing the sugars in a uh, seaweed, and it's actually connected, it's a form of E. coli actually that can digest the seaweed's sugar and uh, turn it into ethanol. What do you think when you hear something like this, Lewis? Here's the positives. Number one, if you compare this to growing ethanol from corn, it's less efficient in terms of the amount of space you need to get X amount of ethanol. And it comes at the expense of being able to grow food, corn for food or some other kind of crop altogether. This is being grown in the water. It's also going to be much more efficient when you look at the end product and how much resource, uh, how much energy goes into that production it's much more efficient. I like it. Well, when you're dealing with water, I mean, how many acres of, of farming are you going to need here? How deep does the water need to be? Does it need to be in tanks? Does it, I mean, I imagine it would because you need to contain everything that gets uh, converted. I mean, it just no, seems... No, no, no. Like oh, Lewis, Lewis. Uh, Lewis is going off on an incredible rant here, throwing everything he can and seeing what sticks. Less than 3% of the world's coastal waters can produce enough seaweed to replace about 60 billion gallons of fossil fuel, according to some of the background research that's been done. Okay, I know how much seaweed exists, but that doesn't answer any of my questions. At peak production, seaweed could produce 19,000 liters per hectare annually. That's twice the level of ethanol productivity from sugarcane and five times higher than ethanol productivity from corn. It sounds great. Will it happen? <laughs> Well, here's what's going to happen, right? Um, first of all, the funding the, for the this... Con the conspiracy theorists will say that uh, big oil companies are going to do everything they can to squash this. Of course. Uh, before we even get to that, I, I, I like to leave the conspiracy theorists for the end of the segment. Uh, funding for this research came from the U.S. Department of Energy's Advanced Research Projects Agency, a grant from Innova Chile, and a Norwegian oil giant named Stat Oil. So the, the obvious question is, do we get to bet on which big oil company will buy the patent to this and then kill it? We could take bets, yeah. <laughs> that is, that is, I don't even think that that's a conspiracy theory. I mean, that's a perfectly reasonable way to prevent a project like this from getting off the ground uh, without having to find fault in it. You, you ha convince the small companies developing this to sell out and then you just squash it and keep developing fossil fuels. Um, that's, that, that seems to be, to be very likely. Or if you actually uh, are interested in this technology and think that this may be a feasible way to produce ethanol in the future, you develop it with the, with the resources you have as a big oil company. Yeah, I, it just, it's very disappointing because on the one hand, it, it's amazing because we hear so much about the free market should dictate what new energy sources are developed and we should let private industry look into that, etc. But even when you do, the, the, free, the so called free market has become so disproportionate uh, while it's not a monopoly situation, it's definitely monopolistic, and, and when you look at who controls the money, the ability to simply buy out and create a situation where you make it impossible for one of these tiny new startup uh, opportunities to really do business, you buy it, you force them to sell, and you kill it, it's not really the free market the way those that uh, uh, started using the term intended. I think we've gone beyond really a free market, especially when we look at oil, and look at how so heavily subsidized that entire industry is, it's not really free. Right. And then who is to blame? I mean, I, I guess the politicians who 
the corporate political structure right. is, is basically what's to blame. 